less than a week ago, Donald Trump went on Joe Rogan's podcast, and it did not go too well for him. Well, now, we have J.D. Vance going on the same podcast, and it went just about as good as you would expect. It was so bad, in fact, Joe Rogan called out J.D. Vance to his face as he attacked women. So in this video, we're going to go over that clip, but first, I'd like to show you a few other moments from that podcast, because this was not the only embarrassing part for J.D. Vance. So first, let's take a look at J.D. Vance not seeming to know how vaccines are supposed to work. I, so I, I, I took... I took the vax and, you know, I haven't been boosted or anything, but the, the moment where I really started to get red pilled on the whole vax thing was the sickest that I've been in the last 15 years by far was when I took the vaccine. And I, you know, I've had COVID at this point five times. I was in bed for two days. My heart was racing. I was like, the, the, the fact that we're not even allowed to talk about that, even, you know, I, no, no, like serious injury. But, but even the fact that we're not even allowed to talk about the fact that I was as sick as I've ever been for two days and the worst COVID experience I had was like a sinus infection, I'm not really willing to trade that. Yeah, that was really dumb. J.D. Vance said that he felt sick after the vaccine, which is kind of what happens when you get a vaccine. He also said that the symptoms when he actually got sick were not as bad as the vaccine. So because the vaccine was worse, that makes the vaccine bad. Now, I cannot tell if J.D. Vance is just an idiot or going along with the talking points because, yeah, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. Now, another insane thing that happened was Joe Rogan point blank saying that, hey, you shouldn't be prosecuted for going across state lines to get an abortion. And J.D. Vance had the audacity to say that he's never heard of that happening. Just take a look at this. One of the issues is that men are making decisions for what women can, can and can't do. I hear that. And one of the more concerning aspects of this is like, say, if you live in a state like Texas, where there's a, a limit to when you can get an abortion. I think it's like six weeks, which a lot of people think at that point in time, you can't even tell whether or not you're pregnant. And this puts a lot of women in like very vulnerable positions. And then there's this thought that they could go to another state where it is legal and have an abortion, but they could be possibly prosecuted for that in their state. That that's concerning to me that we can make if, if there's a place in the country where it's legal to have a medical procedure and you live in a state where it's not legal, that your state can decide mm. what you can and can't do with your body, which is essentially based on a religious idea. And a lot of the and I'm not criticizing it one way or another, but I'm saying that a lot of what this choose life thing is about that life is precious and life is sacred and life begins at the moment of conception. And some people agree with this, but other people disagree with this. And it seems to be uh, a lot of it is based in religion. My concern is using that to dictate whether or not a person can legally travel to another state. I don't think the government should be monitoring where you travel or what you do when you travel as long as that thing is legal. Mm -hmm. And I'm concerned with this idea that you could be prosecuted for it in your state for doing something that's legal somewhere else. I don't like the idea, to be clear. I've not heard of this maybe as a as like a possibility, but not as something that actually exists in the in the law. But I've not heard of somebody being arrested, and I don't like the idea of arresting people for moving about the country. I haven't heard of them doing it either. I've heard, of, okay. I've heard of the discussion. I've heard as a threat. That, yes. That I, How can J.D. Vance be running for vice president and not know anything about this? I swear, whenever Trump or Vance are confronted with something that they just don't want to deal with, they default to saying that they know nothing about it. It's just so insane. But here's the even better part. Joe Rogan actually called out J.D. Vance to his face as he attacked women. Just take a look at this. Like the, the concept in the zeitgeist is that abortion had always been, you know, Roe Ro v. Wade had always been the law of the land. And then all of a sudden that was taken away. And you have these religious men who are trying to dictate what women can and can't do with their bodies. Yeah. Yeah. No, look, I mean, again, I, I understand that. I understand the, the, the pushback against that. But I, I think you can go, like with so many other issues, you can go way too far about it. And it becomes trying to celebrate something that it, at the very best, if you grant, I think, every argument of the pro-choice side, it is a neutral thing, not something to be celebrated. I think there's very few people that are celebrating that. I think it's great that Joe Rogan finally called him out after he spoke so many lies. I saw a lot more of the podcast and he let J.D. Vance just go on and on about some things that are straight up lies. But it's good that he was at least able to call him out on women's rights. 
audience. And I think it's because Joe Rogan knows that this issue kills him in the polls. So he's trying to sort of say, hey, maybe you shouldn't go that direction. But either way, it is proof that even Joe Rogan has enough common sense to see that abortion is healthcare and that shouldn't be taken away. But here's the thing, if Trump and J.D. Vance win, they are going to do everything in their power to make a nationwide abortion ban. So if we want to prevent that, then the only way is to get out and vote in less than a week.